so I thought I would do a little story time of how I converted. A lot of people think that I just converted because I just started posting about it on my TikTok. But I actually converted when I was 17. Alhamdulillah, I'm 21 now. I'm married. I have a little baby boy. His name's Rumi. Um, and yes, I just want to talk about how I converted. So like I said, I was 17. Um, I... I had very strict parents and I didn't go out very much. Um, in middle school, I went to private school, a Christian private school. Um, so that set up a really good foundation for studying because you know I already had the background biblical knowledge to compare it to. Um, I, in high school, because I was so like isolated, I didn't see friends often and I had very strict parents and everything. I. I just dived into the Bible because, you know, I've always loved God. I've always known that there is one God. I just, I, so I wanted to study the Bible in depth because I'd never finished it front to back. So this is when I finished it front to back. It looked like a highlighted coloring book. It was amazing. Um, my wall was full of Bible verses and I went to school at one of the like required meetups say school I did online school but like I, there's a building we had to meet up at anyways <clears throat> at one of these required meetups and I met a Muslim it's the first Muslim I ever met um and naturally I was like I'm gonna convert this person duh that obviously didn't go very well for me because I did a little uno reverse card on myself but I went to the library picked up every book on Islam I could find because now I know everything about the Bible right now I'm going to compare it with the Quran, and now I'm going to convert, force this person to convert magically. Um, so I, there was literally a book that addressed like every kind of stereotype that I already had. It was like, first page was like, no, jihad does not mean jumping off a building and killing yourself and bombing yourself because God wants you to. I started from there. I started from there. So I picked up these books and started reading, of course. I read the Quran. And, you know, I, I just kept waiting for, like, some kind of evil verse to validate my point of view of, like, this oppressive religion and whatnot. And every single time I looked for one, I just found one that told me the exact opposite. And things that actually aligned with the Bible to the point where, like, when I was reading the Bible, I was like, why was no one, you know, practicing this? But you're taught, you know, oh, that was that time period. Now, in the New Testament... If you're a Christian, you know that this is in the New Testament, so don't try to tell me it's the Old Testament. In 1 Corinthians 11, there's a verse about veiling. Um, and it's actually kind of aggressive. Like, the, the tone is very aggressive. And it's very, you know, you do this for man because you're the glory of man as a woman. And I always thought that that was a little odd, but I didn't really question it because Christianity, you're taught not to question God. Um... And Islam, it's the opposite because we know that all the answers are in the Quran. So why wouldn't you question God? Why wouldn't you go to him and ask your questions freely and search for answers? And Islam encourages searching for the truth because why would you fear a religion? Why would you fear picking up the Quran and reading it if you know you're correct, you know? And a lot of Christians fear the book as if it's like you touch it. It's like black magic or something. It's the love. But, you know, so I... I, 1 Corinthians, there's that verse, but then the, the Quran has the verse about hijab, obviously, and it's very gentle, and it starts off not even addressing the women, it starts off addressing the men to lower their gaze, and I always thought that that was very beautiful, and alhamdulillah, you know, <clears throat> I just, it, my mind got blown every day, um, the fact that there's seven heavens, that's not a thing in Christianity, that's, the like, what, there's seven levels to heaven, like, all these things, I was taking notes, I was waking up at 6 a.m. praying and um, watching Islamic videos and I was so excited, I was so excited. I was watching tutorials on how to pray um, and following them like side by side, writing down the transliteration of the Arabic um, on index cards, putting it in front of me and praying with it. Um, and I was doing this all in secret, mind you. I Eventually my parents found out. Um, my dad was like my best friend, so when he found out, he just came upstairs, and it wasn't really a big deal for me to have, you know, 50 books on my bed, but it was a big deal for it to be the Quran, so he was like, oh, he was a little skeptical, a little. but he was like, 
<laughs> I, I, he was supportive, kind of. He, he didn't really think anything of it. He just, um, he was like, you're not going to wear that hoorah thing on your head, right? I, I do wear that hoorah thing on my head, but anyways. He, um, I, I just was, like, excitedly telling him, Dad, like, you know, like, this is not what everyone says it is. This, this makes sense. Like, there's logic in this book. Islam teaches logic that aligns with God. Like, because in Christianity, you're taught that God is above logic, you know? And I understand that from a point of view, like our version of logic is much different than the creator, you know, the person who knows everything about everything. But <clears throat> I, I knew that an omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent God, like that couldn't be three. That had to be one. And I'd always, my whole life thought of God as one. So this was not a surprise to me, but like, when you're Christian, you don't think that there's another route because it's taught in Christianity that if you believe in anything else, you're going to go to hell, which is what makes it so surprising that people think Islam is such a vindictive and, you know, scary, oppressive religion is that Islam was the reason women were given rights. And Islam does not diminish the Bible in any way, shape or form. It just says, you know, the Bible was corrupted by man, and so we have brought this Quran as a seal of the religions. That the Torah was had truth in it, and the Bible had truth in it, but man corrupted it. And if you look at the earliest English version of the Bible, it's the King James Version. Fit for King James, you know. Catholics were the first Christians, and we all know back in the day, they were taking the Bible and saying that the commoner could not read it because they were the only ones good enough to read it so don't you find that a little bit odd like that's not a little bit odd to you so <clears throat> I got to a point where um I was crying to God I was on my knees and I because I think I'm gonna go to hell right I'm like God like please tell me like what to do I I what am I supposed to do and I felt this ease in my heart and I was like, why would God punish me for praying five times a day? Why would God punish me for believing in one God? Why, why would God punish me for being someone who donates to charity? For being someone who fasts to control their desires? Who wears the hijab, which was originally revealed in the Bible to be worn, but people just don't wear it. Like, why why would why and i felt this comfort and i knew that you know this is what i had to do and so i converted with my laptop open and i looked up the shahada and i set it in my childhood bedroom um and soon after that my best friend passed away anya um and i knew that like i knew death was not going to wait for me to convert and so that's I, it was an extremely difficult time for me, you know, like my mom was hiding my Quran, I was hiding practicing Islam, I was following prayers on YouTube, but Alhamdulillah, everything you do as a revert is rewarded, and he's carried me so far, he's given me everything I've asked for, every Tarawi prayer I've prayed has been answered, even maybe the ones that shouldn't have been answered, but every Tarawi prayer has been answered, every Tahajud prayer has been answered, and I find so much pride in being a Muslim, and I am so, like, you can never take that away from me. No matter what, you can never take away from me that I did that. I did that. And, you know, my family has a very hard time with it still. Um, naturally, they're very Southern. It's, it's not very popular to be Muslim and Southern, but, and I'm sure that my old christian private school uses me as an example of what not to do on the regular <clears throat> but alhamdulillah for everything i'm muslim now and i'm very happy to be muslim and i always will be and this is my pride and joy that's it so i don't have a lot of time but let's talk about the individual reasons that i converted to islam <clears throat> i already said that i read the um the uh, 
verse in 1 Corinthians about wearing the scarf that, and there are some Christians who practice it, you know, but I just thought it was weird that most Christians don't practice it. Um, and that the verse was so aggressive in the Bible versus the gentleness of the Quran. Besides that, the seven heavens thing really blew my mind. Um, the fact that Islam tells us that there's seven heavens. Another thing, um, the Big Bang. In Christianity, especially in private school, you're taught, you know, the Big Bang didn't happen. Islam, it says that the Big Bang happened. It says in the Quran, the Big Bang happened, that God created the Big Bang. And that's how the universe was made. And so it was mind blowing to see science and Islam align, which is not, again, isn't taught in Christianity. You're taught that God is above science. God is above logic. God is above all the things that the, that the Quran talks about and says these are actual evidences that God exists. Another thing, you know, the fact that Jesus prayed with his head bowed down on the ground, and that's how Muslims pray. That, that was, again, very mind-blowing for me. Another reason would be that the prophets in the Bible are the same prophets as the Quran. You know, there's, there's a couple in the Bible that are not in the Quran, but and I think that there's one in the Quran that's not in the Bible, but um, I, I had no clue that, you know, these are the same people that Islam talks about, Abraham and Joseph and Mary and who else? Lot. And some of these stories are different, right? Some of these stories are actually, like, these people are, are villainized in the Bible, and they are not villains in the Quran, which is interesting. And again, Quran says that this is the seal of the religions, that this is the truth, and that the Bible has been corrupted by man, that it had been revealed with the truth, but it got corrupted by man. Another reason, the Bible, like, mainly speaks to men, whereas the Quran speaks to the prophet, and tells him, tell this to mankind. That was very different for me. And actually, I feel like the Bible is a lot more misogynistic. Is The Bible is misogynistic compared to the Quran. The Quran is not misogynistic. The, again, the gentleness of the hijab verse is beautiful. Is absolutely beautiful. Of course, there was also, you know, do not eat swine. It says that in the Old Testament, but... As far as the Old Testament goes, a lot of Christians say that, you know, that's the Old Testament, that that, that was time period, that was that time period. We don't do that anymore. And there are some Christians who do practice the Old Testament. It's just, I was Southern Baptist. So, yeah. Modesty is a big one. Um, praying multiple times a day, I thought that it was beautiful that... In Christianity, there's no, like, prescribed amount of times to pray. Um, Islam, there is. You can obviously choose to pray more, but the fact that, relating to what I said earlier, the fact that we pray the same way that Jesus prayed, the way that all the prophets prayed. Um, yeah. I'll think of more later. Bye. I gotta go to work.